Hello everyone, my name is Neil Ennis and I'm from Expert One. If you've used Iron Speed Designer before, I'm sure that you've seen how easy it is to create a powerful web application with just a few clicks. What I'd like to show you today is how to synchronize your database schema. In other words, when you make changes to the underlying tables on which your application is built, how do you inform Iron Speed Designer of these changes so that you can include them in your application. By changes I'm referring to things such as new columns, new tables, changes to the type or width of an existing column and changes to the name of an existing column or table. Here is an existing Iron Speed Designer application that I've built that is based on the pubs database that comes shipped with SQL Server. There are no code customizations to this application. This is how it appears right out of the box. As you can see, there are pages for authors, for employees, for publishers, for titles, and so forth. Our problem is that we don't have an email address for our authors, and some of them live overseas, so we need to add a country to the address and increase the width of the state column. Here you can see the SQL script to alter our table to incorporate these changes. When I run the script, the table is altered. Now, how do I tell IronSpeed about these changes, and how do I add these new columns to my existing forms? There are several options within IronSpeed Designer that help us synchronize the database schema. If you would just like to see a list of all the things that have changed in your schema since it was last synchronized, Click on Databases, then select Synchronize Database Schema Scan Only. This will give you a list of changes, but will not change your application. As you can see in the database window, we now have highlighted in orange a list of all the tables that have changed and all the columns within that table that have changed. So you can see that country has been added, email address has been added, and the state has changed from being 2 to 5. This option is useful in larger applications where you need to keep an eye on what has changed in the application because it tells you without actually changing anything. And then if you want to accept any of those changes just select the table and click on accept changes for selected table. This then incorporates the schema changes into your IronSpeed Designer application. Or, if you'd like IronSpeed Designer to accept all changes for all tables without you having to review them first, simply click on Databases and select Synchronize Database Schema. Now that IronSpeed Designer is aware of the changes, we can change the existing forms to show the new columns. Go to the form that you would like to change in design mode. Open up the toolbox and drag the new columns onto the form including their labels. Here's the label for the email address. And here's the field for the email address. We'll add a new row below this one. Here's the label for the country. And here's the field for the country. And then build and run the application. Once the application has been built, click on Run to run it. And now, when we go into Edit an Author, we can see our new columns. We've got the email address. We can now put up to five characters into the State column. 
and we also have a drop down for the country which Iron Speed has put in automatically. And because this is an email address, if we put an email address in, it will validate the address. So if instead of putting a hash in there, I put an at or something like that, and then try to save the record, it says that there's an invalid value for email address. So this has all happened without me having to do any code customizations. Ironspeed designer has been smart enough to recognize that we now have an email address in there that needs validating and it's been smart enough to actually provide a drop down list of countries in there because we've used the word country. So that's how we incorporate simple changes to the database into Ironspeed Designer. Sometimes the changes to your schema are more complex. For example, what happens if you remove a column from a table or rename it and that column is being used on an existing Ironspeed Designer form? What happens if you add a new table to your database? To demonstrate what happens when we remove columns from tables or rename them, I'm going to remove the changes that I made to the database and look at how Ironspeed Designer handles it. Here's my SQL script to undo the changes that I made to the author's table previously. I'm going to drop the email address column, drop the country column, truncate the state column and then shorten its width back to two characters. I run the script. Now let's go into Ironspeed Designer and update our schema. We'll use the quick option this time rather than going through all the changes in the table. And as you can see in the summary here, Ironspeed Designer has told us that it's recognized the changes that were made and it's actually removed the literals and the fields from the form. We haven't lost our work. Those changes that we've made, those um, labels and fields, are still on the form. But unlike existing columns on the form, the ones that we've just added now don't point to anything. So effectively, they're invisible. We can see that they're like a, a, um, a field or a label that's on the form that has been added but hasn't actually been attached to anything. And the result is that if we do nothing more to this form and leave it as it is and then run the application, you can see here that the fields and labels that we added to the form, although they're visible in design mode, they've been removed by Iron Speed Designer when we rebuild the form. This gives us the benefit of keeping the work that we've done, if we need to keep it, but making sure that the resultant application behaves as we would expect it to behave. Another interesting scenario is where you have an existing database and an existing Iron Speed application, but now you'd like to add some new tables to the existing application. In this example, we're going to add a users table, a roles table, and a users role table with some foreign keys between users and roles so that we can define people who are allowed to use the system and the sort of roles that they're going to have. So we run the script to create those tables. Then we go into Iron Speed and synchronize the database schema like we did before. And what you'll notice is that Iron Speed is saying to you, hey, I don't think anything's changed. I haven't detected any changes to any tables. And the reason is that these new tables haven't been added as pages into the application. So building pages on new tables is pretty easy. It's just a matter of, of running the application wizard and selecting the new tables and the new pages that you'd like to create. So if we go across to the pages tab, in the application wizard and drill down to the new tables that we'd like to add. 
click next and next and finish and let Iron Speed Designer create the new pages for the new tables. So in a lot of ways this is a lot easier than changing existing tables. And then when the Iron Speed app Designer application is built you can see that Iron Speed Designer has automatically updated our menu and added the new tables to the menu. Roles, user roles and users. Incidentally, if you're interested in adding security to your Iron Speed Designer application, there are some excellent videos showing you how to do this on the ironspeed.com website. And that concludes our video today on how to synchronize your database schema with Iron Speed Designer. I showed you how to use Iron Speed to recognize changes in your database schema such as new column names and changes to existing, existing column names. I showed you how Iron Speed Designer is intelligent enough to recognize different types of fields and to build validations for things such as email addresses and drop down lists for things such as countries. And I also showed you how Iron Speed Designer intelligently handles a situation where columns are removed from tables and when new tables are added to the database. Thank you for your time today and I hope this video was useful.